Howdy. Me again. Well, Netflix is getting ready to release something called Power Rangers Once and Always, April 19th. That and I'm wearing my wearing the t-shirt to represent once again my absolute absolute favorite ranger of the of the uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers series, my absolute favorite iteration of Mr. Tommy Oliver. Rest in peace to the GOAT, Mr. Jason David Frank. Anyway, this is about commemorating bringing back as much of the original Power Rangers cast as they could. Netflix is doing so by creating Power Rangers Once and Always. It comes out April 19th. How do I tend to commemorate my past again? A top 10 list. Alright. I can't do... I can't really do the top 10 favorite rangers since I only watched through um since I only really watched up until Zeo came along I mean I was already 8 9 years old when the first season of Power Rangers started airing on Saturday mornings in North America I, yeah I think it was September of 93 I would have been 9 and then I didn't really start watching until they were on in syndication. I, I missed out. I missed them on Saturday mornings until they started rerunning them in syndication. So. On technicality, I might have seen. Yeah, Ten Rangers. I mean, I, I went. I was through two red, two black, two yellow, and then green turned into white. So, but no, I'm going to do something different. I am, I am counting down my top 10 favorite monsters from the Mighty Morphin series of Power Rangers. Top 10 favorite creatures that we actually saw created. There's going to be some controversy toward the end of the list. I'm letting you know that right now. But through, but through the machinations of Rita Repulsa or Lord Zed, here are my top ten favorite monsters from the first two seasons of Power Rangers. Yeah, I think it ends with two. I don't think any from season three made the list. Let's talk about... Number 10, the Drommel monster from Return of an Old Friend. The Drommel used a hypnotic gas to make others around him do its bidding. It tended to burrow underground. It was also involved in a plot to successfully kidnap the Rangers' parents and the other parents of Angel Grove High School. It's a pretty devious plot, even for Rita. The thing with the drama was it was always surrounded in mist. It never really spoke. It always seemed to be up against a dark backdrop. And it spent 70% of its time on screen burrowing about underground until it hopped up and used its hypnotic gas. Either to have Billy steal the dragon dagger or to... <clears throat> or to, albeit very, very briefly, have the other rangers gang up on Trini. Wait a minute. Attack. No, they ganged up on Kimberly, excuse me. So, why does Drommel even make the list? Because it was my first action figure in, in the 
shorter height of the, of the figures, the ones with the action features. He was my first space alien action figure, and I didn't even know which episode he came from yet. I got him for Christmas. Anyway, it was, he was an interesting looking character. Number nine, Gotan the Stormbringer. Again, very much because of how interesting this, this monster looked after Rita turned the Noble Lion trophy from the Angel Grove High School games into Gotan the Stormbringer, who was supposed to be part goat, part lion, and all I really saw was the lion's head. The goat's head may or may not have been in the middle of his chest, I can't remember. Anyway, anyway, very powerful, very iconic, and great voice acting too. It was number nine. Number eight, Nimrod the Scarlet Sentinel, the White Light, parts one and two. Nimrod was not only a, a very iconic looking monster, it had the ability to create its own assistance. It had the ability to clone itself. That was quite a power for it. It was also very powerful in its own right and just strong enough to invoke the debut arrival of the White Granger and Saba. Number seven, the Nasty Knight. If Zack was afraid that all of his friends had spontaneously forgotten his birthday, three guesses who remembered the occasion and even sent him a birthday gift. Rita Repulsa invoked, invoked the Nasty Knight who had served her once before in a historic time to battle it out with the Black Ranger. Something about the earlier episodes of, of Power Rangers was that, at least in the early days, each Ranger had their chance to personally get rid of at least one of Rita's monsters. Now obviously, obviously more often than not it was the Megazord. Or it was the Red Ranger. Or when he came along, it was the Green Ranger. But Zack, Billy, Trini, and Kimberly each at least had their shot at getting rid of at least one creature. And I'll get back to that a little later in the list. The Nasty Knight was Zack's chance to show his, to show his stuff. And, um, yeah, he contended with the Nasty Knight up until the other Rangers could arrive, and I think he dealt the crushing blow to it, albeit it was from the controls of Megazord, of course. So, anyway, the Nasty Knight was no... was... <laughs> no... was no... <laughs> was no more and and we can move on with the <clears throat> and we can move on with the list I'm sorry number six <laughs> number six. Lord Zed's Primitar monster, the Primitor. I've always been, um, I've always enjoyed the, the stories or the little anecdotes about shape-shifting or cloning or this is not actually the hero you think it is, not actually the person you think it is, and Lord Zed's Primitor was perfect. He took Zap, 
Zap. Zax. Zax ape outfit and turned it into the Primitar. Uh, now, for those of you who don't know this, to ape something is also to mimic it or to imitate. I, I honestly didn't know that myself until a few years ago, but it, it was so it was appropriate. Anyway, pretty soon the Primitar is running all over the place trying to confuse the Power Rangers. And of Lord Zed's earlier monsters, Primitar was one of the best. And again, I just really appreciated its power and its ability. Number five. The Slippery Shark. The Slippery Shark controversy comes from on fins and needles. And it brings up a very, very important question to viewers. Who between the Red and Green Ranger was the better Ranger? Man, the Power Rangers were doing just fine until you came along. And then the Green Ranger was introduced and the writers severely powered down the other Power Rangers into multicolored damsels in distress until the Green Ranger could save them. Yeah, um, Jason and Tommy, at their heart, they were friends. They were fellow rangers. They also tended to be a little bit competitive with one another. Very much so. And this wasn't the first time that, that they competed with one another. It was simply the first time that it was due to Rita's magic. And any monster who can almost break up the Power Ranger team through use of a magic fin has to be on a top ten list somewhere. I simply put it at number five. If only because it finally brought up the question of the red versus the green ranger. Who do, you, who do you think? Who do you think I'm going with on this one? Number four. Piranha's Head, Lord Zed's first monster. The very first monster that introduced Lord Zed was the Piranha's Head. It was good enough for a three-part adventure that makes it pretty good. I mean, what did the Piranha's Head do? It controlled ATVs. It froze people. It did destroy the Dino Zords, and that was, and that is part of what made it so memorable. Dino Zords are gone. Whatever will the Rangers do? As if they don't have the Thunder Zords waiting in the wings, but we viewers don't know that yet. Neither do the Rangers. Zordon knows that one. Knows that part. Anyway, Piranha's Head was... was... Lord Zed's first creation and one of his better ones. Number three, Madam Woe. Madam Woe. Um, she controls the wind. She hails from another dimension where she captured Billy's first. Uh, first love interest 
and she gave the Blue Ranger his chance his chance to shine and defeat her. Not necessarily single handedly, but I mean the other Rangers were around, but it was it was the Blue Ranger that that was the most instrumental in defeating Madame Woe and saving Marge. Her name was Marge. And there was something sinister about Madame Woe, especially for one of Rita's earlier creations. And again, before the Green Ranger came along, Rita was creating a lot better monsters. And the Rangers handled them just fine. But, I mean, then it had to become very, very... Then the series had to become very, very centered around the sixth, the sixth Power Ranger. Number two, King Sphinx, if for no other reason than this, then I remember this. This was the very first episode of Power Rangers that I ever watched. I sat down, it was on in syndication, it had to have been a half day of school or I would have missed it altogether. And I went, I'm going to give this a chance. I'm going to give this show the chance that it deserved long ago. I was hooked. Again, the very first episode I ever saw was... Yeah, the title escapes me, It was, but it was the one centered around King Sphinx. And the Red Rain and Jason had to go it alone against King Sphinx and Goldar. Because the rest of the power team, whenever they showed up, King Sphinx would zap them into another, would flap his wings and send them to another dimension that ended in Angel Grove Juice Bar and no one knew the difference when they reappeared. I mean, but anyway. The battle between the Tyrannosaurus and King Sphinx and Goldar was was pretty epic for for the time it was almost good enough to make King Sphinx number two you want to talk about some honorable mentions I want to talk about some honorable mentions honorable mention Lord Zed's Guitardo monster from now this episode's name is escaping me. He was a monster who played hypnotic music on their guitar. That's awesome. And it was a cicada. I mean, you know, great power. Great, great power, zero responsibility because we're talking about the bad guy. The twin man from a bad reflection on you. The first time that Rita made the duplicate rangers, and the only time that it really mattered. The twin man was, was just an awesome looking monster. He just looked great. And again, in the first instance that Rita made the Eve, disguised her putties as the evil rangers, they disguised themselves as the teens first caused trouble and that was and that's what made it slightly better if not very better than Mighty Morphin Mutants and the only reason she had to make the Rangers again was because the first time Green Ranger wasn't with them that was basically the only the only premise there uh, I'm not going to get away with her with talking about a list of Rita's monsters without throwing in Pudgy Pig. He was a giant pig's head 
on top of normal sized pig hoofs and wearing a centurion helmet. He ate food. He was a pig. He was not one of Rita's best creations. <laughs> he was one of her more iconic ones again, very, very early on. Another honorable mention goes out to Bones from. Shoot. The second episode of Power Rangers. And I knew, high five, that's right. I, I, I was going to say, I knew the name of that episode a second ago. Um, I just liked his voice. It was very ro robotic, almost. And it was, and it gave Trini her chance to not only overcome her fear of heights, but to, but to really help the team that day. The Eye Guy. The Eye Guy just missed the list. He just... In fact, a minute ago he was on the list and then got moved for... I think I moved him for the drama. Yeah. Anyway, it just... Again, the... His appearance, his powers, his actions that day. Just made for a great and memorable villain. Goldar and Scorpina. The controversy. They deserve to be number one. They really deserve to be number one. Except we never saw Finster nor Rita actually create either of them. So they were, so as far as we know, they were not a Rita Repulsa or Finster creation. Well, unless you go by the really bad movie from three, four years ago. Yeah. And then we saw her create Goldar. And I'm talking about Goldar from the first season where he acted as Rita's general, not the second season where he got the Beast Man treatment and was treated as Lord Zed's dull yes man. The controversy in this list continues. Goldar and Scorpina aren't number one. The evil Green Ranger is obviously not a Finster creation either. Um, but Rita did did groom Tommy into becoming the evil Green Ranger. That made the evil Green Ranger one of her creations because she still had the, the green power coin and the dragon dagger for reasons that the series never got into but she was the former Green Ranger for Zordon's power team anyway turning Tommy into the evil Green Ranger was one of her most diabolical efforts to date Well, it ranks right up there with trying to steal his powers next. <laughs> but anyway, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. The Evil Green Ranger took a five-part miniseries for the Rangers to convince to join their side. Not even really defeat, but to convince to join their side. And serve as a very, very powerful ally. As in a single ally who was just as powerful as the five original Rangers used to be together. But that's not the fault of the actors necessarily. That's That goes more into the writing.
But Tommy Oliver, the evil Green Ranger, was was the the best of the very worst that the Rangers had to go up against. we go my top 10 favorite Power Rangers villains creations either by Rita by Lord Zed or in the case of Rita Finster could have done the creating I know I changed this title all over the place first what's my favorite monsters all of a sudden it's my favorite creations to make room for number one So what do you guys think? Where did I miss the mark? Should I have changed the rules one more time and placed Goldar and Scorpina in the joint number one spot that they deserved? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and let the power protect you.